very good consistent switch hitter batting left handed and Billingsley's first pitch is high ball one Lopez hitting 327 right 301 left last night there was like one percentage point different from right to left hitting left Lopez takes high again and a two ball no strike count so Chad Billingsley trying to get off on the right foot last night you remember Randy Wolf struggled in the first inning gave up one gave up four in the second inning and then pitched a gem and it was too late for him as Billingsley misses again for ball three. The three and older count to Felipe Lopez with Gerardo Parra and Justin Upton following him. 3 0 pitch on the way, and that's down the pipe, three and one. It is 62 degrees here in the ballpark. It feels even warmer than that. The forecast said a 5% chance of precipitation from now through midnight. The next pitch is a strike. The Lopez is still there, working on a three and two count. Lopez on the trip has struggled just two for 10, but he is hitting 301 against right hand pitching. Now the 3 2 pitch coming up. Billingsley deals, bouncer up the middle, Castro to his right, up with it, gets rid of it in a hurry, and we have one away here in the first inning. So the Dodgers really don't lose much defensively, whether for no, call no, sits no, out no, or no, Hudson, no, because no, of the no. presence of Juan Castro. The so one away. And the batter now, Gerard O'Para. Para playing left field and left hand batter checking in. Gerardo, one for four in the series, takes a look at a pitch for a strike and the count 0 and 1. Para appeared as a pinch hitter last night and struck out. And in the opening game of the series, he was one for three with a walk and scored what turned out to be the winning run for Arizona. Takes off the plate and down and a one ball one strike count. So the D backs struggling they are twelve and a half games behind the Dodgers trying not to drop out of sight. And the one ball one strike count to Gerardo Parra and he slashes one foul off to the left into the seats and the count one and two. 35 year old A.J. Hinch talking to his pitching coach Mel Stottlemyre Jr. We have talked about the fact that Finch, Hinch at uh, 35 he can go back to Lou Boudreau who was in his early 20s when he managed the one two pitch is fouled away talking about youth certainly Gerard Parra would fall into that category he's just 22 years old out of the Dominican Republic signed as a free agent by the D-backs five years ago. So power waiting Billingsley turns on the rubber and the one two pitch on the way high fastball swung on and missed. The power blown away. Two down strikeout number one for Chad Billingsley he just let it fly the pitch was up out of the strike zone I believe and power went after it anyway. So with two down Justin upped in the batter. Upton last night had the grand slam home run in the second inning and the pattern was he was way out in front of a Randy Wolf changeup and then the second pitch he hit it in the bleachers. So Upton waiting he has 10 home runs 33 runs batted in ground ball to Casey Blake he's up with it to get him and that's that. So the D-backs go quietly in the first inning. Billingsley walks off and at the end of half an inning, no score.
Chad Billingsley makes 12 pitches, sets Arizona down in order, and we go to the bottom of the first inning. We can take a look at the Dodger lineup. It's Juan Pierre, followed by Rafael for call. James Loney moves up a notch to hit third. Then you have Casey Blake, followed by Andre Ethier and Russell Martin. Matt Kemp, Juan Castro playing second base for Orlando Hudson, bats eighth, and Billingsley on the mound. On the mound for Arizona, John Garland, local boy, born in Valencia, lives in Granada Hills, went to Kennedy High School in Granada Hills. John ready now in the first pitch to Juan Pierre is off the plate. Ball one, one and oh. Garland is a big fella, six feet six, 215 pounder. He had back to back years where he won 18 for the White Sox. He gets a strike and a one ball, one strike count on Juan Pierre. The Cubs drafted Garland out of high school in the first round. The 1 1 pitch is whacked to right field, but Upton is there to haul it in. So Pierre hits it hard, lines out the right field, and we ought to take a look now at the D-backs with Para, Young, and Upton in the outfield. Reynolds, Drew, Lopez, and Whitesell at first, and the battery of Garland and Miguel Montero. So Rafael for call will be coming up with one out, first inning, no score. Rafael batting 249 with a home run and 11 runs batted in. In last night's game, he drew a vital walk in the eighth inning. First pitch to Rafael. He moves up in the box and takes a strike. That had Mark Reynolds on the move at third. 0-1 oh the count with James Loney, last night's hero, on deck. Strike one pitch on the way, and Percol takes down and in. One ball and one strike. So Rafael Percol... Checking in against John Garland, and the 1 1 pitch on the way is swung on and fouled at the plate. Garland was saying when he was drafted first round by the Cubs, his grandmother was thrilled because she lives in Chicago and was a big Cubs fan. But he never made it to the Cubs. When he did come up, he was on the other side of Chicago, the south side, with the White Sox. Her call fouls a pitch away, and the count stays 1 and 2. And basically, John was with the White Sox from 2000 through 07. Then he went to the Angels last year where he won 14. As we said, he's had back to back 18 wins in 05 and 06. And the pitch to Fercal gets him swinging. Down he goes. And we have two out here in the first inning. When you look at John Garland and break down his pitching, home and road, it just doesn't make sense. He is having a lot of trouble over in Arizona. In fact, at home, he is two and three and an earned run average, believe it or not, of 8.7. To get him out on the road, two wins, one loss, and an earned run average of 2.1. Though he is indeed Jekyll and Hyde. Big right hander works Loney, and James takes low ball one. One and oh the count. For the umpteenth time, James Loney with the bases loaded, delivered, and it was a big one last night. The 1 0 pitch golfed at and missed. One ball and one strike. Loney just one for seven in the series, but he hit the jackpot, chasing in three with his double. He is really dynamite with the bases loaded. He takes one that's in at the knees for a strike. This year, when he comes up with the bases loaded, he has three walks. He is 5 for 13 and 17 runs batted in. James takes low and that runs the count. Two balls and two strikes. So John Garland battling Chad Billingsley tonight and a two ball, two strike count. Big right handed deals low and away. Ball three. Three and two the count. So Loney trying to extend the inning on deck, Casey Blake. Now the 3 2 pitch coming up to Loney. Garland delivers over the top and he's low, ball four. So the two out walk to James Loney will bring up Casey Blake. We were doing a little studying. We didn't realize that the rain would mess up the attendance tonight. Of course, what they announce will be tickets sold. It has nothing to do with how many people actually come to the ball game. But then again, when you have a sparse crowd, some wonderful things have happened down through the years. 
Blake checks in and has a pitch off the play ball one. So in looking a few things up we came up with some rather startling moments you might not even think it could be possible but it did like Babe Ruth's final home game as a Yankee at the Yankee Stadium against the Red Sox. The 1 0 pitch to Blake is in there. How many people do you think came out to see the Babe say goodbye. How about 2000. Stan Musial's 3000 to hit in Chicago 5000. Ted Williams final game at Boston you would think they knocked down the walls attendance 10,000 one ball and one strike to count a throw to first early win big favorite in Cleveland on his way to his 300th victory paid attendance 13,000 Dave Moorhead's no hitter Cleveland at Boston 1,247 another throw to first and back is Loney. The reason we got to looking things up is the fact that Randy Johnson trying to win his 300th game tonight in Washington and you know Washington averages maybe 15,000 a game and it's been raining back there and the start of the game delayed and it's already almost 1030 back there. The pitch is low and that runs the count to two balls and one strike. Though Randy Johnson may or may not go after it tonight. No score bottom of the first inning the 2 1 pitch coming up swung on hard ground ball to the right side Lopez stays with it and takes care of it. So for the Dodgers no runs no hits a walk and a man left and at the end of an inning no score. John Garland makes 18 pitches sets the Dodgers down and we go to the second inning no score. It'll be Stephen Drew Mark Reynolds and Miguel Montero and the youngsters are here enjoying the ball game whether or not. And Billingsley looks down the barrel to get a sign and here we go. Chad ready in the first pitch to Stephen Drew the left hand hitter is in for a strike and the count 0 and 1. Drew did not play last night because Randy Wolf gives left handers such a bad time. But he does have a seven game hitting streak. Billingsley turns on the rubber and the strike one pitch is swung on and foul back and the count 0 and 2. You can tell that it has rained here just by looking at the infield. It is scarred with light and dark colors but it's in good shape. 0 and 2 the count to Stephen Drew. Billingsley ready comes back and drops it off the plate on the outside one ball and two strikes the count. Chad Billingsley. Six and three trying to win his seventh. Now the one two pitch on the way Billingsley works it inside with a fastball and a two ball two strike count. Billingsley. 
has certainly been pitching well. Right hander turns on the rubber and his 2 2 pitch on the way. Off speed pull foul outside of first and down the line. Chad struggled a bit, however, in the month of May. In April, he was 4 0. Then in May, 2 3. Although his earned run average was still a very good 3.3. Now the 2-2 pitch on the way. Fastball line drive over the head of call into left center. Up with it there is Matt Kemp. Drew makes a turn and holds on with the long single. So Stephen Drew is now hit safely in eight straight. And the batter will be Mark Reynolds. In looking at Billingsley's work, for instance, Drew was hitting 370 against him, so no surprise. Mark Reynolds has two home runs against him hitting 308. What makes it interesting for him pitching to a home run hitter like Reynolds is the fact that Chad has not allowed a home run to a right hand batter this year. In fact right handers are hitting only 192 against him and the pitch fouled away off to the right. Oh and one the count. Reynolds feaster famine hitting 258 13 home runs. 32 runs batted in, but, and you talk about a fly in the ointment, and it's not the infield fly, 74 strikeouts for a hitter who struck out 200 times last year. So Mark waiting, 0 and 1 the count. Billingsley looks over his left shoulder at Drew, now works the plate, and it's swung on and fouled away, and the count 0 and 2. So Mark Reynolds, a very talented ball player, Made a couple of wonderful defensive plays against Russell Martin the other night playing third base. And then when need be, he moved over and did a good job playing first. The so Reynolds waiting. 0 for 7 during the series. Right hand batter and the strike two pitch on the way, and Mark fouls it back. And the count remains 0 and 2. You know, somebody had a chance to make a catch, didn't make it in the stands, and some of the other fans boo him a little bit. Oh, and two the count to Mark Reynolds. We're in the top of the second inning. Stephen Drew at first, no score. One thing about the D-backs, they piled up a lot of extra base hits. They have 175 extra base hits. Pitch is swung on and missed, and so Reynolds strikes out for the 75th time. And we have one away here in the second inning. Strikeout strike out number two for Chad Billingsley. Billingsley with his strikeouts this year. He's had 11 and that was against the Giants way back in April. Since then his high would be nine against the Phillies the middle of May. So the batter is Miguel Montero left hand hitting catcher. And he has a look at a pitch low ball one. Chris Snyder caught last night went 0 for 3. Montero caught the first game and went 0 for 3. Did walk and score. Miguel hitting 217. Two home runs, six runs batted in. Out of a stretch goes Billingsley looking over at Drew, still watching. Now works his hitter low and a two ball no strike count. Stephen Drew. Does not steal bases. He is 0 for 1 right now. And that's after 53 games held on by James Loney. 2 and 0 the count as Drew takes a very cautious lead. Remember, he doubled in first game and was picked off second base by Hiroki Kuroda. Two balls and no strikes, and Montero, tired of waiting, backs out. So Miguel from Venezuela. He'll be 26 in July. The 2 0 pitch, Montero looks it and it misses. Ball three, three and 0 the count. So Billingsley went three and 0 to Felipe Lopez, then went three and two and got him. Now he goes three and 0 to Montero here in the second inning. Miguel has hit safely in nine of 10 during a stretch from the end of April into early May. But that 217 average shows he's been struggling, but he just takes ball four. So a leadoff single, then a strikeout, then a walk, and Chris Young coming up. 
you wonder if ball players have nightmares and if they do what they worry about or what they think of and for Chris Young no doubt last night he had to spend some time thinking so near and yet so far young in game one went 0 for 4 last night he went 1 for 4 but he came so close to catching James Loney double but no cigar and Loney had a double and three runs batted in. So the right hand hitting center fielder struggling at 175 and Billingsley delivers breaking ball hit down to third Blake on the bag for one back to first double play. Nice play by Casey Blake to get enough on the throw and at the end of an inning and a half no score. happy to report and they were all pretty busy eating ice cream or dreaming wearing a big glove which is almost bigger than the fellow wearing it little girl sitting back of him fussing with her hair it's always been so bottom of the second no score Andre Ethier Russell Martin and then Matt Kemp Ethier last night had a home run and a double he was the only Dodger to solve and be able to figure out Dan Heron who pitched a gem until the bullpen got in his way. Garland into the windup now the pitch to Ethier and that's in for a strike for the Arizona Diamondbacks last night was not the first time the bullpen really let them down and blew a lead. Dan Heron no doubt thinking about a, a magnificent game that got away. May the 25th Arizona was leading seven to one over San Diego. And they blew that one. May the 26th, they were leading six to nothing in the eighth and ninth inning and blew those. Ground ball to first, up with it is White Cell, and that'll do it for Andre Eth here. And we have one away. And if that was not enough, on May the 27th, Arizona was down and surrendered another bad eighth inning rally. Well, there were three in a row. Uh, against San Diego and then they come here and blow what was looked like a lock when they were leading 5-1 with Heron on the mound. So one away and Russell Martin checking in at the plate. Martin did not play last night the night before a catcher's nightmare with five wild pitches. Russell checks in at 266 takes a look at the strike and the count 0-1-1. Martin could have had a big night the other night with the bat except for Mark Reynolds who made two dazzling plays to take extra base hits away from him. Strike one pitch to Russell is low. One ball and one strike. Well we hate to say it but some dark clouds off to the left. The lights have yet not taken effect really. 
One one pitch just off the play ball two two and one the count. Whether it's cold or whether it's hot we'll have weather whether or not. Two and one to Russell Martin Garland over the top and a good fastball knee high outside corner two and two to count. Garland turns on the rubber and Big John's next pitch is waved at and missed and Martin trying to catch up with very late two strikeouts for Garland. You know a reminder Friday night fireworks and it'll be the Dodgers and the Phillies. The Dodgers invite all fans on the field after the game for a spectacular show set to the soundtrack of the 80s during I Love the 80s night. For tickets call 866 Dodgers or visit Dodgers.com today. Matt Kemp has been hitting in the seventh spot in the Dodger lineup just about all year. And when you compare it to other seven spot hitters, he's doing very well. He takes a strike, hitting 310, six home runs and 30 runs batted in. Now the strike one pitch on the way to Matt, foul back, 0 oh and 2 the count. He is first in stolen bases. First in on base percentage against all the seven spot hitters. He's first in extra base hits. Here's the strike two pitch and Matt takes just off the play ball one. One and two the count to Matt Kemp. On deck Juan Castro two out second inning no score. One two pitch on the way is sliced a one hopper white cell makes a good play feeds Garland coming over. So Josh White makes a nice play on a one hopper hit to his glove side and at the end of two no score. Third inning, no score. You know, the Dodgers WIN broadcast with former Fox baseball anchor Jeannie Zelasco handling play by play alongside former Dodger Mark Sweeney serving as the analyst. And they'll continue for each Wednesday home game for the remainder of the season with the live audio feed available for free at Dodgers.com slash win WIN. Meanwhile, Josh Whitesell starts it off, takes a strike. And the count 0 and 1. Whitesell had a double in the second inning of the first game to drive in a couple, and that was a big one as the D back salvaged that game 3 2. Whitesell takes off the plate. One ball and one strike to count to Josh. Whitesell, left hand hitter. Now Billingsley's off speed pitch on the outside corner. Nice pitch. One and two the count. No score top of the third. 
Josh Whitesell lives in Redlands, although he was born in Durham, North Carolina, and he went to school here at Loyola Marymount. Swings at a pitch. It's in the dirt, picked up by Martin in the out recorded at first. So Whitesell strikes out. And for Billingsley, that would be his third strikeout. And that'll bring up John Garland. John Garland, having spent enough time in the American League, he has proven that he's not much of a hitter. He has had 19 at bats, and he has struck out 11 of the 19. He takes a strike. So he is 0 for 19. Of course, he gives you that big strike zone at six feet six. John waiting, and the strike one pitch on the way. Breaking ball, but it misses. And a one ball, one strike count. We have one away, top of the third, no score. Dodgers in the D backs, the outfield shallow, Kemp shading right center. And the 1 1 pitch is hitting the air to shallow right. Look out, it is going to land for a base hit. So John Garland, who was 0 for 19, singles to right field, and you can see in your mind's eye the big grin that he has. Second baseman, Felipe Lopez. The Garland to base hit. Now, if Dan Heron gets a base hit, that's not news. Dan Heron had three hits last night, went three for three, but for Garland to get a base hit, yeah, that's head shaking time. And the batter now is Felipe Lopez. No score, third inning, one out, a runner at first. They're not going to hold him. They don't expect Garland to really steal any bases, especially since he had not been on base all year. Lopez waiting at the plate, hitting left handed, switch hitter batting 306. And the next pitch is swung on and foul back. In checking the records, Garland had a base hit in 04, a base hit in 05, and a base hit in 06. Did not get anything in 07 or last year. So that was his fourth career hit. So he is four. For 39. The 1 1 pitch on the way is taken a little high. Two balls and one strike. Billingsley has walked one, struck out three, allowed two hits and no runs. Lopez waiting as Billingsley looks in to Reed Martin. Now Chad out of his stretch. 2 1 pitch on the way is taken high and away. Ball three. So Billingsley fighting his control a little bit. Started out 3 and 0 with Lopez, eventually walked Montero in the second inning, and now he has gone 3 and 1 to Lopez second time around. Chad out of a stretch, and the 3 1 fastball is fouled off. 3 and 2 the count. Dodgers will await the arrival of the world champion Phillies. They'll be here starting tomorrow night. Clayton Kershaw will go up against Cole Hamels. Three and two the count. Garland at first short lead. A look by Billingsley. The pitch is swung on and fouled away. So Felipe Lopez still hanging tough. On deck Gerardo Potter. So Felipe Lopez. Good leadoff man, tough out. Lopez, 29 years old from Puerto Rico. And the 3 2 pitch swung on, big chopper foul right by Lorenzo Bundy, the first base coach. And it's still 3 and 2. In looking at Lopez, who was originally drafted by the Blue Jays, he was a first round pick, too. Born in Puerto Rico, lives in Apopka, Florida. And he's played with the Blue Jays, the Reds, and the Nationals, and last year with the Cardinals. 3 2, and the pitch to him is swung on. Little roller right on the line to Loney, who steps on the bag for an out and then drops the ball while in the act of throwing. So Lopez is out, and down to second goes the big pitcher, John Garland. Maloney steps on the bag and then like a wet piece of soap the ball just flies out of his hand as he draws back his left hand ready to throw. 
the Garland like Ichabod Crane running down to second base. He he probably would have served as quite a an obstacle to get a ball down to the shortstop with Garland in the way. So two out and here is Gerard O'Para who struck out in the first inning and Gerardo fouls it away. Oh and one. Interesting numbers for Parra. With nobody on base, he's hitting 159. With runners on base, he's hitting 552. Do you believe that? With runners in scoring position, he's hitting 706. And the pitch to him is strike. So he's in a hole now, 0 and 2. And the toughest time to perform at all, runners in scoring position with two out, he's hitting 8. 33. Though the league doesn't know very much about him, but they are learning. He's only 22 years old and goes after a high fastball again. That's what got him in the first inning. So he's paying the price on the job training. No runs to hit a man left in the two and a half innings, no score. And Chad Billingsley for the Dodgers. It'll be Juan Castro, then Billingsley and Pierre. And the cotton candy is going well. The youngster with a mohawk with mom and dad. Faces in the crowd. Always fun to look around. And then, of course, to see a little girl eating a, a chocolate ice cream cone with a lot of chocolate on the outside of her mouth. And she's having fun with the cone. Oh, yes. Juan Castro filling in for Orlando Hudson tonight and he has just played exceptionally well especially when he starts. This is his 13th start 11 at short one at third and tonight his first at second base and Castro takes ball one when he starts Castro hitting 341 he has three extra base hits and he has seven runs batted in one of the three extras a home run. Castro backs off, takes a strike, and a 1 1 count. Dodgers have beaten Arizona 5 out of 7. Now the 1 1 pitch on the way, and that's a little low. Ball 2. 2 and 1 to Juan. John Garland, basically a sinking fastball, two seamer, curveball change, and slider needs work. He's still working on that. Two balls and one strike to count. Garland comes back and the fastball is off the plate and the count runs to three and one. Garland's fastball been clocked anywhere from 90 to 95. He's 6'6, 215. 
3 1 pitch fastball foul back three and two. John will be 30 the end of September. You may remember the Angels sent Orlando Cabrera to the White Sox to get Garland. Then he filed for free agency and the D back signed him to a one year deal. 3 2 fastball is just off the plate. So Castro draws a walk, and that'll bring up Chad Billingsley. You know, Saturday, Dodger Town will have a home with its very own zip code, 90090. And in celebration, the Dodgers are offering $90,099 seats on this homestand with the Phillies and the Padres. So visit Dodgers.com slash eSavers and a promo code Hudson13. Chad Billingsley showing bun drops it down nicely out to get it as Montero throws him out but Billingsley does his job that's his fourth sacrifice this year so he moves Castro to second base and with one out they'll leave it up to Juan Pierre boy the time flies as Billingsley jogs off the field I just realized it's an anniversary for Chad Billingsley and Matt Kemp. On this day in 2003, they were each drafted by the Dodgers. And here, Billingsley, six years later, is pitching, and Matt Kemp is playing center field. The third man who was drafted by the Dodgers on that day, Adam LaRoche, who has moved on. So Castro at second, one out, Juan Pierre lined out to right field in the first inning. And the first pitch by Garland is swung on and missed. Oh, and won the count. Pierre, who has been a story all by himself, looking for base hit number 1600. Well, he's had four years with 200 or more, hitting 376. Garland comes back, and the pitch is on the outside corner, 0 oh and 2. Juan Pierre heaving a big sigh coming into the game. He was three for six against Garland. No score, bottom of the third, one away. Garland at the belt, looks back at Castro, now works the hitter, and it's way inside. A familiar pattern. The last pitch was outside, the next one right in on his knees. One and two the count. Dodgers in a stretch of 17 straight games, and so far they are seven and five. Now the one two pitch on the way instead Garland backs off the rubber. The pitching staff for Arizona not only Garland but their starters do much better on the road than they do at home. Here's the one two pitch and Pierre takes inside. The D back staff at home an earned run average of 5.4 on the road 3.2. And of course, Garland is a perfect example. He had three games in April and May where his earned run average over that stretch was almost 20. It was 19.8. Pierre is fooled on a breaking ball down, tried to go after it, and couldn't do it. A big pitch for Garland. That would be the third strikeout for John Garland. It would also be the Seventh strikeout between the two teams. And then after Garland got hammered for those three, his other seven starts, his earned run average 2.7. So John working on for call is trying to pick up Castro, and Reynolds shortens up on the edge of the grass at third. No runs, two hits for the D backs, no runs, no hits for the Dodgers, and we're in the third inning. Garland hides the ball back of his right hip now set at the belt another look at Castro and the pitch to for call inside under the hands one ball and no strike last year left hand hitters hit 300 against Garland with 16 home runs. next pitch swung on and missed one and one right hand hitters hit 307 against him and they hit seven home runs.
John looks getting a sign for call trying to pick up Castro no score in the third. And the one one pitch on the way fastball on the outside corner Angel compost the plate umpire Jerry Davis Brian Gorman C.B. Buckner working the lines. Compost born in California lives in the state. One and two to Raphael. Garland ready here he comes and he works it down and in to run the count to two balls and two strikes. Big John. Whose coach in Little League was his mom. And as he said he's one of the big reasons why he's been successful. Two two pitch fastball swung on and missed. So with a runner at second, Garland strikes out Pierre and for call. No runs, no hits, a man left. And as the helmet spins, we've spun for three, no score. Black trivia question. Orlando Hudson has three gold gloves. One in the American League with Toronto, two with Arizona. Who are the only two Dodgers second basemen ever to win it? Well, we'll give you an answer in a little while. Orlando's just one of a couple of infielders to win a gold glove in each league. No score, fourth inning. Chad Billingsley getting ready to pitch to Justin Upton, then Stephen Drew and Mark Reynolds. That would be the heart of the Arizona lineup. Strike to Upton. Two and one to count. Upton hitting his first grand slam of his young career. He figures to hit quite a few before he's finished. 0 oh and 2. Back in April of last year, Upton homered in three straight games, becoming only the fourth player in Major League history to homer in three straight at the age of 20 or younger. He was 20. The other three, Jimmy Sheckard, Mel Ott, and Willie Mays. One and two the count to Justin Upton. He's 21 years old. He'd be 22 near the end of August out of Virginia. 6'2, 200 pounder. Chases one, down he goes, and Martin will get the out at first. Five strikeouts for Chad Billingsley, and we have one out in the fourth inning. Boy, the bottom dropped out of that thing. In fact, it bounced, and Upton was already fully into his swing. Well, remember the other night he talked to his helmet, so every time he goes back, we look, but. Uh, I guess he's only going to do it once. And the batter now, Stephen Drew, who singled in the second inning. And that's ball one. JD, of course, doing well with the Red Sox. Stephen has worn out Billingsley in the past and singled a center in the second inning. 
That's a strike. One ball and one strike to Stephen Drew. He's 26. Been with the D-backs for three years, and he was a first-round pick out of Florida State. That's a strike. One and two. Stephen Drew hit for the cycle, though he's already accomplished that. Last year, he had 40 doubles, 10 triples, and 20 home runs. Only the third shortstop to do that, and he blisters Billingsley again. Who are the other two shortstops to do what he did last year? Robin Yount with third Milwaukee base, and Nomar Garcia Parra with the Red Sox. So Stephen Drew is two for two. He is hitting eight straight. And the battle will be Mark Reynolds. Reynolds struck out in the second inning. The thing about Mark, and of course the D backs are being very patient with him. I mean, he has so much talent, both with the bat and with the glove, you just have to ride out the strikeouts. And ball one. When it's all said and done, Reynolds. Is only 25. He's been playing for his third year with Arizona. Last year, 28 home runs, 97 RBIs. Oh, sure, 204 strikeouts. He struck out 75 times already this year, but 13 home runs, 32 ribbies. Drew at first and draws a throw. Drew does not have a stolen base. He's 0 for 1. Picked off second base the other night. Pretty hard to put on a play with Mark Reynolds because he has so much trouble making contact. One and off. One and one. Mark is out of the University of Virginia. In fact, he played shortstop because the third baseman was Ryan Zimmerman. Who is an even bigger man on campus and of course is the leader of the pack in Washington. One ball and one strike. Ball two, two and one. And Reynolds second major league at bat. That was just two years ago at Coors Field. He doubled in two runs. He hit a ball dead center 413 feet away. Drew at first. We're in the fourth. No score. And that runs the count to three and one. Billingsley. In a scoreless battle with John Garland. Drew goes three and one. It's well, there was no call at the plate, so it was ball four. And Martin threw down to second. We were watching. Angel Campos never gestured. Maybe he talked, but Martin didn't hear him. You know, that's the one thing we never like to. We never second guess an umpire's call, fair, foul, in, out, whatever. But it really is maddening not to know what the heck they're calling. And of course, Angel never flapped a wing, and the crowd thinks, oh, great, they got Drew. But no. Instead, their run is at first and second, and maddening because supposing Drew breaks a leg sliding into second just because the umpire didn't make any indication. Very frustrating. And here's Miguel Montero. Of course, I still believe. The problems with the umpire signs always began in the 50s when television took over. And the umpires who made those great safe out ball strike, and you could see them from the bleachers, were intimidated by the players. The players would holler at an umpire who had a big, admittedly, maybe you'd call it flamboyant, but they'd make a call that everybody knew, and the players would start going beep, beep. Showboat, and I think they really became intimidated. And now, wow, 
Brown foul sound like a crack bat a little stalk of celery and Miguel Montero heading back to the rack. One and two the count. So in the inning Upton struck out Drew singled Reynolds walks and Montero up there one ball and two strikes. Billingsley had made 45 pitches in the first three innings. Garland had made 47, so they're pretty even. And they're scoreless on the board. One ball and two strikes. Half swing, down he goes. That's a half a dozen strikeouts now for Chad Billingsley. AJ Hinch, the 35 year old skipper, trying to cheerlead a little bit. And Chris Young coming up. To repeat, Billingsley had 11 strikeouts against the Giants back in 13th of April. His strikeout high last year in July, he struck out 13. Well, right now he has a half a dozen. And here is Young, who grounded into a double play. Big curveball, ball one. Josh White cell on deck. Young has just had an awful time, not only at Dodger Stadium, but the entire year on the road. I mean, his average on the road is disappearing. That's right. One on one. Young fella out of Houston, Texas. And again, the magic word, the operative word, patience. Got an awful lot of talent, and they just have to wait. One and two, the count. You know, Young broke in as a rookie and had a marvelous year. In 07, he had 32 home runs, 68 runs batted in, stole 27 bases. I mean, he was dynamite. Last year hit 248, and this year his average out of sight. Nice smothering stop. The last thing Russell Martin wants is a wild pitch. I mean, that would wear the patience of Job as to what happened last night, the other night. And Billingsley, by the way, coming into the game has three wild pitches. So the deuce is wild. Two balls, two strikes, two out, two on. No score. And ball three. Waiting on deck, Josh Whitesell, the pride of Loyola Marymount. So with a full count and two down, the run is ready to go. Drew from second, Reynolds from first. Chris Young has struck out 49 times. Runners go and it's foul back. Phillies here tomorrow night. The Phillies begin a four game series with the Dodgers beginning tomorrow night, Friday night, Saturday afternoon, and Sunday evening. Clayton Kershaw and Cole Hamels tomorrow night. Eric Milton and the veteran Jamie Moyer the following night. So they'll try it again. Run is ready, three and two. And now Billingsley wants to talk to Martin. No score in the ball game. The D-backs have had the base runners. They have three hits. Drew has two of them. Dodgers have had two base runners on walks, Loney and Castro. And the Arizona runners poised and ready to go, three and two with two down. And foul back. Still three and two. So back to second goes Drew, returning to first is Reynolds. 
Billingsley trying to take care of Chris Young. Runners go again, and a breaking ball is up. Tried to throw a big, slow curveball, but it didn't work. Well, Billingsley has struck out six, walked three, and I guess Honeycutt wants to talk not only about that pitch, but there was just nothing on that one. Chad, a 25 pitch inning. The batter will be Josh Whitesell, who struck out in the third inning on that breaking ball in the dirt. Whitesell, who hurt the Dodgers in game one when he doubled the right field on a three and two count, scoring both Reynolds and Montero that night. Later in that game, the pitcher batted in Whitesell's spot, and then Augie Ojeda came off the bench, another local boy, and Augie doubled. So here is White Cell with a chance to hurt. Bases loaded, two out, and the pitcher John Garland on deck. Off speed for a strike. 0 and 1. Breaking ball in the 70s. Josh well put together, and he has a look at Drew at third, Reynolds at second, and Young at first. Down and dirty. One ball and one strike. White Cell had been with the Washington Nationals. He was actually drafted when the Washington Nationals were the Montreal Expos. One and one. Fastball, a big bouncer leaving the bag as Loney has to feed. Loney looked down to second, but he had no play. And Billingsley alertly covering the bag. No runs, one hit, three left. And at the end of three and a half, no score. You can get anything on the menu any time of the day. And by Southwest Airlines, ready when you are. Go to southwest.com, grab your bag, it's on. Chad Billingsley gets off the hook, leaving the bases loaded in the fourth, and was still scoreless as the Dodgers come up. A note on the D-backs, you know, sometimes if you're with a ball club that plays badly in a series, you say, well, they just played badly, but A.J. Hinge can say to Kirk Gibson, you know, we could have won both of these games if we had just one base hit with a runner in scoring position. And it brings it up. The Diamondbacks are now 3 for 20 with runners in scoring position in the series. That's a 150 batting average, and that'll make a 35 year old much older. Ball one to Loney. 
James walked in the first inning on that ground ball wide at first. Loney wanted to throw the ball to for call, and Rafael, for one reason or another, never went to the bag. That could have been trouble, but Billingsley, as a veteran, was over to first to handle the throw. Two and oh, the count. But boy, from little things, big things are made. Talking about big things, John Garland pitching well. We're in the fourth. D backs no runs, three hits. Dodgers no runs, no hits. Before the game, we were talking about some memorable feats that occurred before very small crowds. So keep an eye on Garland. Two and zero. Oh. Right. James hitting 284, two home runs, but he's the big butter and egg man. He delivers 41 runs batted in. Ball three. And a little roller. Lopez takes care of it. And one away here in the fourth inning. Remember the trivia question? We were talking about the fact Orlando Hudson has three gold gloves, one in the American League and two in the National. Who are the only two Dodgers second basemen ever to win one? Think about it. Charlie Neal, you're probably not old enough to remember. Charlie with the 59 Dodgers. And Davey Lopes, whom you will see starting tomorrow night when the Phillies get here. Meanwhile, the old dog rests. Boy, he deserves a rest. I think Joe Torre summed it up best when he said, Orlando's just beaten up. He plays so hard. He always throws his body around, trying to block ground balls, etc. You know, another note about Hudson. He is one of only two Arizona D backs ever. To win a gold glove. The other, you may remember, played for the Dodgers briefly. Outfielder Steve Finley. Little roller. Drew scoops, throws, gets him. Two down in the fourth inning, and Andre Ethier coming up. Ethier grounded out in the second inning. We're still wondering about Randy Johnson. You know, Randy was going to go to the mound in an attempt to win his 300th game. They waited, and I think it was about 10 minutes of 11 in Washington time before they decided to postpone the game. Whether Randy will pick up tomorrow night remains to be seen. One and oh the count to Andre Ethier who grounded out in the second inning. Ball two. Reading an article about Randy Johnson. In his career he has hit. A hundred and eighty eight batters. No one is even close to that. Nolan Ryan hit one hundred and fifty eight. Roger Clemens one hundred and fifty nine. By the way. In fact, the only pitchers who ever drilled more hitters since the turn of the 20th century, Walter Johnson and Eddie Plank, and they were World War I era relics, and they both threw hundreds more innings. Randy could become the 24th 300 game winner. 24th, but he has to do it. They say there will be a double header tomorrow. Beginning at 4:30 Eastern Time, so we'll see if Randy goes after it tomorrow. Bouncer to the left of the shortstop, Drew Stephen makes the play. So four innings, Garland doing very well. He is not allowed to hit, and he walks off at the end of four, no score.
Winning quite a battle here. Chad Billingsley and John Garland. Certainly on numbers, Garland is out pitching Billingsley. He is not allowed a hit. He has walked two, and John has allowed one man, Castro, to get to second base. Billingsley has been bobbing and weaving a little bit. He had runners at first and second and one out, and Young hit into a double play. And then the bases loaded in the fourth inning, and he got White so The John ready to go as the hitter. And of course Garland got that base hit in the third inning his first hit of the year one for 20 strike. So Garland Lopez and para. On one. One ball and one strike. In case you wonder about Garland, since he has not allowed a hit for four innings, his low hit game, twice in his career, he's pitched a two hitter. The last time, the middle of April in 2005, when he was with the White Sox. So the local boy, born in Valencia, lives in Granada Hills. One and two. Check swing. Two balls, two strikes. Billingsley had made 73 pitches, coming off a 28 pitch fourth inning. Fastball. Bloney again going wide. Billingsley is there. Whoops, almost threw it over his head. Billingsley has certainly been on a tear tonight. It started with Gerardo Parra in the first inning. High fastball got him. Then Mark Reynolds on a fastball. Then White Cell on a breaking ball in the dirt. Then Parra high fastball. Then Upton pitch in the dirt. And another breaking ball nailed Montero. So he has a half a dozen strikeouts. One away and Felipe Lopez 0 for 2. Little number foul. Lopez, good hitter, batting 305. 29 year old out of Bayamon, Puerto Rico. His hero growing up from Puerto Rico? Sure, Roberto Clemente. Absolutely. One ball and one strike. Ball two, two and one. Check swing, but it's going to cost him a strike. Two and two to count to Felipe. A couple of years ago, he showed up in the Cincinnati Reds training camp. His hair was in cornrows. He had a multicolored tattoo on his right forearm of a Japanese fish. And that's strike three call. Nothing fishy about that. Strikeout number seven for Chad Billingsley. Fastball right down the pipe. So now Gerardo Parra. Who has struck out twice each time on a fastball up. So the young left fielder par up, seeing that he can't make contact here. It'll be interesting to see now, third time around, how Billingsley works him. Fastball, strike, 0 and 1. Gerardo, last name P A R R A, from the Dominican, from Santa Barbara del Zulia. Change on the corner. Oh, what a great pitch that was. So from in the 90s fastball came back with a 70 mile an hour change. Little bend to it at the corner. Oh and two. And another one on the corner. So no fastballs for Parra, and he strikes out a third time. Eight strikeouts for Chad Billingsley, but 
at the end of four and a half, no score. struck out eight John Garland has not allowed a hit Garland has made 61 pitches 86 pitches for Billingsley and Martin fouls it away when Garland is on his game he gets ground balls and that's what he has done so far he's at seven ground ball outs and one fly ball oh and one to Russell and a one hopper into right field well, that's that. And Martin gets the base hit to break the spell. And the hitter will be Matt Kemp. Dodgers have two walks. And now their first hit. Matt Kemp grounded out in the second inning. We mentioned it earlier, but again, Matt Kemp and Chad Billingsley celebrating the anniversary of the Dodger draft. On this day in 2003, they officially became Dodgers, and here they are six years later, both of them in the game against Arizona. Martin has stolen seven out of ten. Kemp is hitting 308. But the last two weeks, he has just been blazing. One ball and no strikes. Camp three for seven in the series. And then grounded out tonight, so three for eight. He's hit safely in 13 of his last 14, trying to move Russell Martin around. Little roller. Garland's only play is to first. So Kemp taps back to the box. Martin takes second. Only the second Dodger to get that far. And the other one who did it is coming the up to the plate, Juan Castro. You know, the Dodgers Juan finished Castro. the homestand with the Padres next Wednesday. And the first 50,000 fans in attendance take home a Dodger jersey cooler bag, compliments of AM, PM. To secure your seat, visit Dodgers.com or call 866 Dodgers today. Here is Castro. He has seven runs batted in, hitting 341, and Billingsley hits back of him. Castro, you may remember, started the year in Albuquerque. He didn't make the club. Then they called him up April the 13th, and he has been an extremely valuable player. We sing the song almost every night, but Castro, Ausmus, Pierre, 
so-called backups have been remarkable. Foul back 0 and 2. Mark Loretta, who was another extremely valuable so-called backup player, draped on the railing in front of the Dodger dugout, talking to Brad Osmus. A lot of baseball knowledge there. 0 and 2 to Juan Castro. Fastball missed. One and two. Garland throwing just like you would imagine, somewhere between 90 to 95. Haven't seen him hit 95, but he's been 92 and three. One and two. Pick off play, but no throw, but enough to make Martin scurry back to the bag. No score, one out, bottom of the fifth. Fastball away, down goes Castro. Fifth strikeout for John Garland, and the battle will be Chad Billingsley. Chad Billingsley. To strike 0 and 1. Billingsley sacrificed in the third inning. Martin at second, two out, fifth inning, no score. Little roller foul, 0 and 2. On deck, Juan Pierre. Tomorrow night, Clayton Kershaw and Cole Hamill. Phillies, the world champion Phillies will be in town. Kershaw getting a little extra day's rest. Last year, maybe his first full year in the big leagues might have pitched a little too much, so they're being very careful with him now. One and two the count. John Garland. He'll be 30 the end of September. One and two. And a base hit to right. Charging up and Martin will stop at third. But Chad Billingsley returns the favor. Garland single to right in the third inning. And Chad singles to right here in the fifth. Martin, however, probably won a score. Up in charging, got off a good throw, and Boa immediately put the brakes on. Martin sliding, then gets back to the bag. So the Dodgers finally get a runner past second, and it's Martin who's at third. There's still no score, and Juan Pierre coming up. Pierre coming into the game was three for six against Garland. He is 0 for two tonight. So three for eight. Lined out to right and struck out. And with a runner at third, we'll check out Garland. Big John has one wild pitch. One and all the count to Pierre. And ball two. When Garland beat the Dodgers back in April, he went seven, allowed three earned runs, and the D backs got him nine runs to win the game nine four. That was a game in Arizona. Two and oh. Fastball, ball three. Go on deck, Raphael for call. By the way, for call has struck out twice. 
0 for 2. For call is 0 for 5 in his career against Garland. So he might be pitching a little more carefully to Pierre. And that's a strike. 3 and 1. Billingsley at first. Martin at third, two out, fifth inning, no score. Dobridge averaging almost six runs per game at home. Fake and a look. Pierre batting 373. Three and two. Though with a full count, Mariano Duncan reminding Billingsley, you got to be going on the pitch. They're not holding Billingsley. White Cell is behind him. Three and two to Pierre with per call waiting. No score. Billingsley goes, and it is ball four. Garland now get into trouble for the first time tonight. You had the feeling, at least knowing the numbers, knowing that Pierre had hurt him in the past, and knowing for Paul had not, that it looked like he was going to try and pitch around, although it, it doesn't seem to make sense to say you're pitching around a hitter to load the bases. But obviously, in this spot, I guess he'd rather pitch to for Paul. Rafael struck out twice tonight, and for call is 0 for 5 against Garland. Oh, well, let's see what happens here. No score, two out, bases loaded. And a strike. 0 and 1. Rafael without a grand slam in his career. He has one home run this year. Ran up as if the bun, one ball and one strike. They wanted to check with C.B. Buckner. He indicated no swing. So Martin at third, Billingsley at second, Pierre at first, and that's ball two. Garland has walked three and struck out five. Little number out to get it is Montero. And there you have it. So I'm sure mentally Garland was saying, I don't care if I walk the air, he's hurt me in the past. And sure enough, he uses for call to bail out of the jam, and it's still no score. Early mic check one, two for Mark Ancliffe.
years ago, the Dodgers were playing in Houston, and they played, and they played, and they played. It was a 22-inning game, took well over seven hours. 44 of the 48 eligible players got in the game. The only Dodger who did not get in was Tim Belcher, who was going to pitch the next day. Among other things, Fernando Valenzuela played first base, Eddie Murray played third, and Josh Hamilton, who had been the third baseman, wound up being the losing pitcher. Oral Hershiser wasn't supposed to pitch, and he went seven. An exhausting day. What happened the next day? They went 13 innings more. Let's go back to this one. No score. We go to the sixth inning. Each pitcher surviving a, an escape route. Billingsley had the bases loaded in the four, then got White Cell. And Garland with the bases loaded gets for call. Justin Upton grounded to third, struck out 0 for 2, hitting 318. That's a strike. One and one the count. John Garland, and this is the kind of pitcher he can be, has had nine ground ball outs. Talking to Montero, whoa, did that thing take off over Upton's head? Two balls and one strike. Billingsley has struck out eight. Two and one the count to Justin Upton. Two and two. No runs, three hits for the D backs. No runs, two hits for the Dodgers. Top of the sixth. Dropped his arm a little bit that time. Different kind of an arm angle or release point. Three and two the count to Justin Upton. Had eight strikeouts, three walks. And ball four. So Justin Upton leads off with the walk. He has stolen six out of seven. And Rick Honeycutt twisting and turning inside, watching Billingsley as Stephen Drew, who is two for two against him, checks in. Stephen Drew is 12 for 29 against Billingsley, somewhere close to 400. Upton, as we said, has stolen six out of seven. Chad had made 86 pitches coming into the inning. And the strike. Stephen Drew single to center in the second inning, single to center in the fourth. Checking with Chip Hale. It's a long distance check. Chip well beyond the coaching box. 0 and 1. Strike two. Chad coming in six wins three losses four and two at home two and one on the road his earned run average is far better on the road it's half of his home ERA and his home average is three point six owns it breaking ball grounded foul Lorenzo Bundy Lorenzo Worked in the Dodger organization, the manager of Las Vegas, and got the chance to be a big league coach, and here he is. Oh, and two the count to Stephen Drew. Upton digging in over there at first as if he's ready to push off and take off. Ball one. A lot of times the count figures so importantly on base running and Bundy talking to Upton 
on a one ball two strike count with a hitter like Drew. It could be they're saying okay. This is a breaking ball. It's a good pitch to run on. No whistle. Upton does not go. Now back. No runs, three hits for the D backs. They had a runner, Drew, forced at third in the second inning. They left the bases loaded in the fourth, and now they have a leadoff man on base in the sixth. The Dodgers had no offense at all. A couple of walks through four. Finally, Martin got a base hit to break the no hit spell, and Billingsley singled. But with the bases loaded, when you got the feeling Garland was being very careful with Pierre and walked in, he then took care of for call. One and two to Stephen Drew. Up and not going. Foul ball. The other thing, of course, with a left hand hitter up, Hinch might want to keep Loney on the bag. Drew has two home runs, 15 runs batted in, but has not been hitting well, batting only 235. Perked up a little bit with this eight game hitting streak. Two and two the count. And he's right there now. Next pitch will be 100. In looking at Chad's work this year, his high a pitch count, 123, seven innings in Philadelphia. Two and two. Well, they think Upton's going to go somewhere along. Justin six out of seven. There he goes and then decides to come back off speed pitch. Three and two the count. Well now with a full count. Let's see if they'll run him. Steven Drew. Has struck out 27 times this year, walked 13. We'll see if that means they'll run Upton. He does not go, and it's blistered foul. Still three and two. So a lot going on here. Martin going out to talk to Billingsley again. So Stephen Drew hanging tub, making Billingsley work three and two. Upton, itchy footed over there at first base. On deck, the right hand hitting Mark Reynolds. So Chad now has gone over the 100 pitch count. Upton, you watch him take a lead. I keep thinking of Daryl Strawberry. What Upton does when he takes a lead, he screws his left foot into the ground so he can push off. Now, with Strawberry, you could bet the house when he would do that, he was going to run. But Upton has not done it this time. And there he goes. And the pitch is strike three. The throw is too late. So Upton has stolen seven out of eight, and sooner or later you knew he was going to try it. So Drew becomes strikeout number nine for Chad Billingsley, but Upton is in there. So now with one out, Reynolds and Montero trying to pick him up. No score. Reynolds struck out and walked. 13 home runs, 32 RBIs, hitting 257. 0 oh and 1. Nice block by Russell Martin.
Mark Reynolds out of Pikeville, Kentucky. Went to school at the University of Virginia. And foul ball down the right field line out of play and the count 0 and 2. Reynolds, 25, he'd be 26 the first week in August. Of course, the, the big knock on him is he strikes out too much, but boy, can he hurt you. Trying to pick up Upton from second base with one out. And that's popped in the air to right field. Ethier coming to the line. Upton holds. And we have two down here in the sixth inning, and the left hand hitting Miguel Montero coming up. So Reynolds goes 0 for 2. Montero has walked and struck out. He's 0 for 1. Two out sixth inning up to his second base. Montero in March of this year lost his father in Venezuela so. Heartbreaking way to begin the year. He's from Caracas in Venezuela. Fastball. Montero hitting 214. He has two home runs, six runs batted in. Chris Snyder does the bulk of the catching, but Montero's getting his share of work of late. 1 0. Oh. Fouled away. Two years ago, Montero was a very valuable pinch hitter for Arizona. This year, coming off the bench, he's two for six. With two runs batted in. A couple of years ago, he had three pinch hit home runs. One ball, one strike. Fastball, a hopper to the hole. Backhanded by Furcal, who just holds on to it. Chip Hale alerting Upton, don't round the bag. So Rafael just saved the base hit. Kept it on the infield, kept Upton from scoring. So that was a fine play. That gets by, of course, Upton scores easily. So first and third with two out, and Chris Young coming up. Big play by Raphael. Chris Young grounded into a double play and walked, 0 for 1. No runs, four hits for the D-backs. No runs, two hits for the Dodgers. Fouled at the plate, 0 and 1. Two pitchers who are really locked in. Chad Billingsley and John Garland. First and third for the D-backs with two out. Drew reached third in the fourth inning. Upton now here in the sixth. Big sweeping breaking ball. A good save by Martin. One ball and one strike. Popped in the air foul. Loney might have a play. It's coming back. He got it. So Chris Young fouls out to his old rival in high school, James Loney. And at the end of five and a half, no score.
It's just as true in pitching as in real estate. Location, location, location. Para going after a fastball up. Came up empty. And that's the way Billings can be. He'll up here, down there, bouncing the breaking ball. And he has the D-back swinging futilely. Nine strikeouts for Chad, but he is paying the price. He just had a 25-pitch inning, and he has now made 111 pitches. So the Dodgers watching his pitch count, and they get Ramon Troncoso up in the Dodger bullpen. So Chad watching now as Loney, Blake, and Ethia try to do something against Garland, who has nine ground ball outs. Ball one. Loney walked in the first inning, grounded out in the fourth. The hero of last night's comeback. And ball two. One two seamer after another. Casey Blake waiting on deck. Raise it up, got a strike. Two and one. Loney coming into the game was one for three against Garland. Fly ball to left field on his horses. Para coming in a hurry, can't make the play. And Loney is into second base. He will go for three and he will make it standing up. Gerardo Parra was shading Loney, of course, more towards left center. And he had a long way to go, and he couldn't make it. That close. Very close, in fact, in looking at the play. Yes, Mr. So Loney at third, nobody out. Blake, Ethier, and Martin coming up. That's the third Dodger hit. Blake has grounded out twice. The infield is halfway. Ball one. Drew moving around at short, but Hinge has him back. No score. Bottom of the six. That's going to go foul down the right field line out of play. One and one. Garland has five strikeouts. Billingsley has nine. Garland has been tested only once, and that was in the fifth inning when the Dodgers had the bases loaded and for call hit one out in front of the plate for the final out. But now Loney's at third, nobody out. One and one to count to Casey Blake. Fastball for a strike. Casey with nine home runs, 34 runs batted in, knocked in Loney with the winning run last night. After Loney had cleared the bases with the double, he was wild pitched to third, and then Casey came up and single to center. And the fly ball should be deep enough. Parrott going to catch it on the run. And here comes Loney. Good throw, but a little high. Boy, Parra got off a good throw on the fly. And Loney just able to get in. And the Dodgers lead one to nothing. And Casey Blake picks up the RBI. I mean, that's right on the money. But high. That's the difference. So the Dodgers get a big break on the fly ball to left by Loney. Pretty good throw by Parra. One to nothing Dodgers. And a base hit to center for Andre Epi. Dodgers have been dynamite at home as you know. And they have been particularly effective in one run game at home. The Dodgers at Dodger Stadium this year have played nine one run games and they are eight and one. 
So Ethier at first, Loney has brought in the run. And the batter now, Russell Martin, who struck out and singled to right. And there goes Ethier, and the throw got him. I'm just wondering about that play. That's a little strange. You would think if Ethier is going, it's hit and run. And he is hung out to dry easily. So somebody either missed his sign or misread it. And Ethier goes back in the dugout. But Andre certainly doesn't figure to be involved in a straight steal. So something happened. That was a busted hit and run play, I think. One and one. So Martin who struck out and then got the first dog you hit leading off the fifth inning. One ball, one strike. Foul ball. We're in the sixth. When the Diamondbacks come up in the seventh, they have White Cell, Garland, and Lopez. In the Dodger bullpen, Francoso has stopped throwing. Belisario is now throwing. Two and two. So there's Ronald under the eyes of Ken Howell getting ready. Two and two. One run, four hits for the Dodgers. No runs, four hits for the D-backs. And he takes care of Martin with that breaking ball, but the damage is done. That fly ball to left field that went for the triple, and then one of the rare fly ball outs by Casey Blake to cash it in, one nothing. Dodger Baseball on Prime Ticket is brought to you by 76, where four Phillips scores you two free Dodger tickets. Complete rules available at participating 76 stations. It's a tough one, one to nothing in favor of the Dodgers with a long way to go to compare the starting pitchers, Garland 98, and Chad because he struck out nine, making more pitches. But the big difference now, Garland has allowed a run. The near miss on the fly ball to left when Parra just missed catching it and then the close play at the plate. But young Gerardo Parra, no doubt feeling he should have caught James Loney's fly ball despite the fact he had a run from here to Phoenix to try to catch it. So Ronald Belisario, who has really turned in a surprisingly good job, comes out of the pen. 
We say surprisingly because you never thought that he was going to make the club in spring training. I think when we were over there in Glendale at Camelback Ranch, they gave Bellasar a number 81. And when you give a number in the 80s, you're not expecting to see that fellow make the club. But Belisario leads the team. He's a workhorse. This will be his 27th appearance. And he's right there with Troncoso in innings. And one of the things about him with that good sinker and he throws hard, he has struck out 30 in 31 innings. One and one. Fastball strike. Josh Whitesell with Garland on deck and big John Roush throwing in the bullpen. Whitesell struck out, grounded out against Billingsley. See you later. So 10 D backs have struck out. Belisario gets one. Billingsley had struck out nine. Now Garland do up and he'll be called away. Ryan Roberts will come up in bad point. So Garland, they had a rough outing the last time out, came back to really show his worth tonight. The D backs, remember, had first and second and one out in the second inning. They had the bases loaded in the fourth inning. They had runners at first and third in the sixth, but they just could not break through against Billingsley. So Garland, angry, frustrated, understandably so, goes out losing one to nothing. So here is Ryan Roberts. Roberts started at third base last night, had two base hits. He went two for four. He also appeared as a pinch hitter in game one and walked. And a strike. Ryan batting 369. He's from Fort Worth, Texas. And another strike. Went to school at the University of Texas and was a big man on campus. As we mentioned, he has a lot of tattoos, and one of them. It says only the strong survive. That's his outlook in life and in baseball. Check swing. I don't think that was a foul ball. I think it's one and two. Yeah, now they're going to take the one ball down. Okay, so the count they take ball one off the scoreboard. 0 oh and two the count. One and two. Roberts bounced around a little bit. He was signed by the Blue Jays. Played briefly for them. Was in one game and had one at bat for the Rangers, and then the D-backs picked him up. Little ground ball to short for call. So two down in the seventh inning. And the batter will be Felipe Lopez. And second baseman number two, Felipe Lopez. Lopez in the leadoff roll is 0 for 3. He is 2 for 13 in the series. Ball one. Ronald Belisario. Boy, what a story. Talk about coming out of nowhere. Now a prominent Dodger reliever. Fouled away out of play. Belisario, 6 2. They say he's about 180. He looks bigger than that. Fastball, slider, and changeup. He's 26. He won't be 27 until New Year's Eve. And from Venezuela, lives in Aragua. 
Fastball grounded into left field. So Felipe Lopez, a two out single, and that will bring up Gerardo Parra, left field, the left fielder. Nine, Gerardo Parra. Parra coming up, and in watching him in the dugout, Parra acting like the whole world is on his shoulders. I think he felt he should have caught the ball that was hit by Loney. It certainly frustrated him. And then, of course, he made that strong throw to the plate, but it was a little high. He's just 22. So he's really just starting out. 0 and 1. Parra struck out all three times tonight. The first two times, Billingsley punched him out with fastballs up around the shoulders. And then the last time up, all he got were breaking balls, and down he went again. Oh, and one. Para hitting 303. Pokes it foul, but he's in the hole. Oh, and two. Para six feet 195. Signed as a free agent by Arizona. Remember that strange collection of numbers. Can't hit a lick with the bases empty, and then when runners get on, hitting 552. Well, we'll see what he does here. Ground ball to for call. Quick flip and that's out. No runs, one hit. A man left. And at the end of six and Dodgers won. D backs nothing. And the crowd will now be asked to stand and sing God Bless America. Tonight we welcome a singer and songwriter from Maine. She recently moved to Los Angeles. Remaining in the game, a half playing third base, number 14, Ryan Roberts. 
Moving from third base to first base, number 27, Mark Reynolds. Now pitching number A couple of changes with the Dodgers leading one to nothing. For the D-backs, they bring in, and Ryan Roberts, who batted for Garland, stays in the game at third base. Mark Reynolds, who had been playing third base, moves over to play first. And big John Roush coming out of the bullpen to pick up. So John Garland is big enough, and Roush is even bigger. And bounces that first pitch. One ball and no strikes. John Rauch is six feet 11. He is 255 pounds. He'll be 31 in September out of Louisville, Kentucky. Went to Moorhead State. As you can imagine, baseball is first love. To him, basketball was just something to do. And once in a while, just for your information, you have somebody as big as John Roush and you wonder about the tallest man in medical history. Uh, we mention it again. His name was Robert Pershing Wadlow. Line drive base head in front of power. Robert Pershing Wadlow was 8 feet 11.1 inches tall. But Rauch is certainly big enough. So Matt Kemp with the leadoff single, and the batter will be Juan Castro. Coming out on deck, Mark Loretta, who had back for Belisario. Down in the bullpen for the second time, Ramon Troncoso is up. Matt Kemp on a little dribbler foul. Kemp has stolen 12 out of 14. The at first, nobody out, one nothing gone. The only run that fly ball in the left field corner, the diving try by Parra, he couldn't make it. And then Blake had the rare fly ball just at the right time to drive in the run because all night Garland was getting ground balls. Garland had nine ground balls and then surrendered the fly ball at the worst time and Loney who had tripled came in to score on a close play at the plate. One and one to count to Juan Castro. Spelling Orlando Hudson tonight. Castro has walked and he has struck out. John Roush, originally a third round pick by the White Sox. And with a runner going, a little pop fly. Kemp lost sight of the ball and they will double him up. So a hit and run pop fly and there wasn't much that Matt could do about it. Castro trying to make a shot. Now Loretta is going to be called back. And he will go back into the dugout. Jamie Hoffman has been moving around a lot with a bat. So both Castro and Kemp walk away and it's going to be Hoffman batting for Belisario. One nothing Dodgers, two out, seventh inning. Attention, please, for the Dodgers. Pinch hitting, number 30, Jamie Hoffman. So, Jamie Hoffman coming up to hit. Hoffman hitting 176. He is 0 for 4 as a pinch hitter. By the way, Xavier Paul. Was back with the club today. So I guess you'd have to say that young Jamie is on borrowed time. Oh, and one.
two outs seventh inning one run five hits for the Dodgers no runs five hits for the D-backs Garland and Roush Billingsley Belisario and Troncoso ready to come in. When John Roush graduated high school and he wasn't drafted he had no thought of becoming a professional baseball player. He planned on a double major in physics and business management. He wanted to pursue a career in automotive engineering and design. When he was a little boy he said he always had car magazines always wanted to go to auto shows. That's popped in the air angling out is Felipe Lopez and that's that. So Hoffman pops it up no runs a lead off single and no one left and at the end of seven it's still one nothing done. Rapid Rewind. AT&T, the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T, your world delivered. Well, we've reached the eighth inning, one to nothing Dodgers. And it'll be Ramon Troncoso picking up for Belisario, who had followed Billingsley. Justin Upton, Stephen Drew, and Mark Reynolds. So Troncoso faced with a pretty good trio here in the eighth inning. The Dodger bullpen has really been remarkable. Among other things, the Dodger bullpen has 15 wins. That's a major league high. The bullpen has allowed one run in the last 12 and two third innings. One ball, no strikes. In there. Upton is grounded out, struck out, and walked. Stole second, and they left him at third in the sixth inning. That's how close the D-backs came when for call went in the hole to backhand the base hit, prevented from going through and prevented Upton from scoring. Out of the way. One and two to Justin. The only run, Loney hit a fly ball to left field in the corner. Para, who was overshifted towards left center, a diving try and missed it. And then Casey Blake, a fly ball, which was rare indeed, got the run home. Little ground ball. Better hurry. You know, that was a tough play. James Loney was not quite sure what to do with that. Castro finally got over there, but Upton legged it out. That's the toughest play for a first baseman. How far do I go? Watch this. Little ground ball. Loney started, then ran back. And by that time that just about took Castro out of the play. It'll be a base hit. 
And we'll see now just how important that is. No chance to make the play. So Upton, who stole second in the sixth inning, now there with Drew at the plate. On one. And looking back in the head to head competition, for Troncoso facing Drew, Drew 0 for 4 against him. Upton was 0 for 2. On one. Upton with his steal of second in the sixth inning has stolen seven out of eight. Martin taking a look over to the skipper to see if they might call pitch out. Oh and one. Oh and two. Drew single to center in the second inning, single to center in the fourth, but struck out in the sixth. Owen two. Ramon from the Dominican Republic, 26 years old. They check no swings as CB Buckner and a one ball, two strike count. Drew checking with Chip Hale. Even hitting 233. Upton at first representing the tying run. Nobody out in the eighth. One nothing Dodger. And a foul ball off third. Blake to take a look, but it's well back in. One and two to count. Phillies come here tomorrow night. Clayton Kershaw and Cole Hamels. Clayton alongside of Hiroki Kuroda. He's learning to throw a splitter. One and two. Upton last year stole one base and was caught four times. And Stephen Drew strikes out a second time. Put it on the bench, first baseman, number 27. Well, you had the feeling that they were keeping Upton on the bag along with Loney to open up a hole for Drew. Now you have a strikeout hitter with Reynolds, and let's see what they do. Upton, as we said, natural running speed and is learning to steal. Last year he was caught four out of five. This year he has stolen seven out of eight. So that's remarkable improvement. And in this kind of a game, speed certainly is a factor. Uh, Justin talking to Lorenzo Bundy. Reynolds struck out, walk, fly to right, hitting 255. Late on that, 0 and 1. Late on a fastball that was clocked at 93. Dodgers got the only run in the game in the sixth, and now here we are in the eighth. And 
and boy they are really keeping an eye on Upton. Paid attendance tonight. Thirty three thousand eight hundred and four. Thirty three eight oh four. Good fastball. 0 and 2 to Mark Renner. Concoso hits 93 on the gun. No balls and two strikes they count to Mark Reynolds. The left hand hitting catcher Miguel Montero is on deck. Owen to. In the dirt gets away but holding at first is Upton. Martin again looking over to see if they're thinking about pitch out or not. But they are thinking about keeping an eye on up and. And there he goes. And it's a ground ball up the middle. So Upton just keeps on going and the D backs are in business first and third one out as Reynolds grounds a single into center. So that little roller could very well be a big play in a moment. Time run 90 feet away and Miguel Montero coming up. So Reynolds gets the base hit. Upton. At third, Montero has walked, struck out, single to the hole at short, would have had a run batted in, except for a fine play by for call. Miguel hitting 224, two home runs, half a dozen runs batted in. If you're wondering about it, he has not rounded into a double play. 0 and 1. Dodgers trying to hold on to a 1 to nothing lead. Reynolds at first, Upton at third. Reynolds has stolen 11 out of 14. Well, they have a couple of fellows who run well at the corners. Reynolds and Upton. One nothing Dodgers. That's certainly in jeopardy now. Ball two, two and one to count. Ramon Troncoso in a little trouble now. Two and one. Did he? Yes, he did. Tried to hold up. Two balls and two strikes they count to Miguel Montero. Montero has struck out 20 times in about 100 plate appearances, so 20%. Two and two. Foul back. One run, five hits for the Dodgers, no runs, seven hits for the D backs. They have left two men at third base. They had a man forced at third. And now A.J. Hinch has runners at first and third again with one out.
Big pitch coming up. Two and two to Miguel Montero. And slap foul, so he's still there. Two and two. Montero takes a look at Chip Hale. Gesturing over to the base runner, Mark Reynolds over at first. Two balls and two strikes. And a ground ball to short for call to the bag for one. High throw, but they get the double play. And that's the first double play Montero has rounded into this year. And for the Dodgers, it came at the right time. And it's still 1 0 Dodgers. Dodgers scored in the sixth inning. A long fly ball to left, charging it. Gerardo Parra failed to make the catch. Loney winds up at third with a triple, and then Casey Blake got the rare fly ball just at the right time, and Loney just did get in under the throw to the plate from Parra, and the Dodgers have made that one to nothing lead hold up, and we're now in the bottom of the eighth inning. The Arizona Diamondbacks have to be thoroughly frustrated with runners in scoring position. They are four for 24. So for A.J. Hinch, it is a tough, frustrating time as the D-backs just cannot come up with the hit to change the score. And for Miguel Montero, still smarting, I'm sure, over grounding into his first double play at exactly the wrong time. Rafael for call, fielding the ground ball, kicking the bag, and throwing to first. So now, Clay Zavada, a left hander, working on Juan Pierre. Zavada with that curly mustache. He's out of Illinois, went to Southern Illinois University at Edwinville. Right, one and one. He had been pitching not against Pierre and a big league team, but for the Southern Illinois Miners. Breaking ball strike. Though he was pitching the independent affiliated baseball leagues. And eventually the D backs picked him up, and here he is. Big roundhouse curveball right into the glove of Chris Young. So Pierre goes 0 for 3 with a walk, one away, 
and the batter for call. You know, Sunday, join the Dodgers at the beach, Bleacher Beach at Dodger Stadium. You can enjoy unlimited barbecue, a Dodger beach bag, private beach party, and oceanfront experience with a bird's eye view of the game. For tickets, visit dodgers.com forward slash beach or call 866-DODGERS. For call, struck out twice, top one out in front of the plate, so he's 0 for 3, but he made a huge play in the sixth inning. Upton would have scored on a ground ball hit by Montero in the hole. Raphael was able to backhand it, keep it from leaving the infield, and it kept Upton from scoring. One and one the count. Pass ball, first strike. One and two. Zavada worked awfully hard to get here. In fact, at one time, he was driving 200 miles to go to school on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Then he would deliver furniture the rest of the week. He give pitching lessons on Sunday, but he got his best GPA. And a fly ball to left field. Parra is there. Started back on it. Two down. So Zavada has come a long way from delivering furniture independently. Lost his dad at the tender age of 55. And all of a sudden, he realized that his mom had already passed away when he was only three. His brother was in the Navy, so it was up to him to keep the house and the farm. James Loney, an important figure last night and another important figure tonight. That's a strike, 0 and 1. We were talking about Zavada pitching for the Southern Illinois Miners. He also pitched for the South Bend Silver Hawks. I'm sure you've heard of those teams. There's no glamour down there. In fact, when he was pitching for the South Bend Silver Hawks, he made 280 a week before taxes. Little ground ball to Felipe Lopez. So Zavada does well, sets the Dodgers down in order. And at the end of eight, the Dodgers one, D backs nothing. Enter Jonathan Broxton.
Down Arizona in the ninth inning, one to nothing. Jonathan Broxton, who pitched the ninth inning last night, made 15 pitches and struck out two. Getting ready now to pitch. He'll face the center fielder, Eric Young. Then it looks like Eric Burns would bat for Clay Zavada. And then Ryan Roberts. So Big John with a rather remarkable series of numbers. First of all, he's 5-0. and oh, A 1.3 earned run average. And he has struck out 41 while walking 10. Roxton is tied for seventh in the National League in saves. He has a dozen. Twelve of 14 opportunities. And his 41 strikeouts have come in 26 innings. I mean, that boils down to 14 strikeouts per nine. So it'll be Young hit into a double play, walked and fouled out. D backs. Have been involved in seven previous shutouts. They're four and three. Oh, and one. The Dodgers have been involved in four previous shutouts. They're three and one, and they are two and zero oh at home. One other note, actually two notes about Broxton. Right-hand batters are hitting 122 against him. Left hand batters are hitting 067. Amazing. Boy, he just really unleashed. Oh, oh and two. One night up in uh, San Francisco. Facing Brian Wilson, they each hit 100 on the gun. 0 and 2. One run, five hits for the Dodgers. No run, seven hits for the D-backs. Who are thoroughly frustrated? Four for 24 in the series with runners in scoring position. Owen two. Crowd wants every pitcher strike. One and two, and that registers 100 on the gun. There it is. And a little ground ball. That was a slider. And for Carroll takes care of him. One away. Now Eric Burns will be coming up. And for Young out there in center field. This has been a very tough series and a bad road trip. So here's Burns. In looking at Jonathan Broxton's record going head to head, Burns is hitting 333 against him. Young was 0 for 8 with five strikeouts, so I guess he didn't really stand a chance. Fastball strike. Burns hitting 215, four home runs, 18 runs batted in. As futile as Arizona has been of late in the series, they're break even on the road. Little ground ball to Loney. He'll do it himself. So with two out in the ninth inning, Ryan Roberts will be coming up. Dodgers are one out away from winning two out of three and winning yet another series.
Ryan Roberts came in as a pinch hitter in the seventh inning and grounded to shore. Two out, ninth inning, one nothing Dodgers. Check swing, they look. No swing, says Jerry Davis. One ball and no strikes to Ryan Roberts. On deck, Felipe Lopez. Two that Roberts has, only the strong survive. He had a big rip at a 99 mile an hour fastball. Not really much to say, you know. You, you just sit back and you watch Broxton throw BBs up there. He's hit a hundred for the second time. The Roberts getting a lot of fastballs. Burns hit a slider on the ground to Loney. Young grounded to short. And Broxton really throwing hard now, trying to put the lid on this one. Phillies here tomorrow night. Clayton Kershaw and Cole Hamels. Boy, he is just something. He hit a hundred yet again, and of course, Gerardo Parra. Still thinking about the fly ball he almost caught but didn't and then the throw on the fly ball by Casey Blake and that stands up the Dodgers are now nine and one in one run games at Dodger Stadium for Jonathan Broxton it took him 15 pitches last night it took him 12 pitches.